My entitled friend confesses her love for me, stating that she wants to be my girlfriend, even though she friendzoned me and ghosted me for over two months. But after I showed my girlfriend and blocked this lady out of my life, she ends up showing up at my house to chew me out, furious that I've chosen my current girlfriend over her. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. I'm a 25-year-old male, and about three years ago, I had feelings for this girl who we will call Megan. She was 22, she was nerdy, she was into anime, and played a lot of video games. It was those traits that made me interested in her since I was also an anime lover and a gamer. Over time, that interest turned into genuine attraction. At first, I was hesitant about asking her out because I wasn't sure if she felt the same way. But after some encouragement from my friends, I made my move. So we met up at a local diner for lunch, and the diner was one of those mom and pop places, and the food was really good. As we were eating, I finally decided to tell her how I felt. Again, I was hesitant about doing so, but went through with it anyways. And you know what? She seemed receptive at first. She asked me what it was about her that made me interested in her. So I listed off a few things. Her interest in anime, her taste in video games, her dark sense of humor, things like that. I didn't want to ask her to be my girlfriend right then and there, so instead I asked if she would be up for getting to know each other more and maybe going on an actual date or two to see where things go from there. She then goes on to apologize and say that she does like me but only as a friend. She said that she didn't want to ruin our friendship and that she didn't want there to be any bad feelings if we did get together but ended up breaking up. And honestly, hearing that hurt a bit. Part of me wanted to at least try to convince her to change her mind, but the only words that came out of my mouth were to say, okay, I'm fine with that. We chatted for a little while longer before we left the diner and went our separate ways. Now, I tried to reach out a few times after that day just to see how she was doing, but I was either left on red or met with one word replies. So after a while, I just stopped reaching out. Fast forward about two months and I finally met someone new. We'll call her Sophie. Sophie was into art and photography. In her own words, she told stories with her art. Whatever piqued her interest wound up as a painting or a sculpture, or even as a framed photo. She was really good at it, and after a while, those same feelings from months before started to come back. But what I didn't expect was for her to feel the same way. So I asked her to go on a date with me, and she said yes. Date nights became a regular thing until eventually we made things official. After our seventh date, I asked if she would like to be my girlfriend, and she said yes. The next day, when I told my friends about it, they were all stoked, and that's because they were the ones that pushed me to move on and not let my rejection from months ago bother me. A week later, I'm sitting in my room reading a book when I get a messenger notification. I look up and I see that it's from Megan. I thought that this was kind of weird, considering the fact that she hadn't spoken to me in months. But out of curiosity, I opened the message, and her message was basically a short paragraph, talking about how after having some time to think, she decided that she actually did want to be my girlfriend. Her message said that she always had feelings for me, and that she was ready to give us a chance. So now things started to look even more weird. I mean, really, after all this time, all the one word replies and unread messages, now she has feelings for me? I decided to take a screenshot of her message and I sent it to Sophie. And after that, I blocked Megan and I thought that would be the end of it. Well, about two days later, Megan shows up at my house and was extremely upset. As I open the door, she starts ripping me a new one, telling me how horrible I am for blocking her after she confessed her feelings for me. I told her that she has no right to be upset about anything, especially considering the fact that she was the one who rejected me and said that we would never be a thing. She then tries to guilt trip me, asking me if her feelings for me meant anything. I then said, well, where were those feelings when I was single? I told her that she doesn't get to switch it up now that she sees me with someone else and then get upset at me for not going along with it. I told her to have a nice day and then I shut the door. Well, at this point, our friend group is divided on this and I'm starting to question if I did the right thing or not. I was just a bit upset and it felt like she expected me to just ditch my girlfriend for her just because she changed her mind. So truly, am I at fault in this situation? Because right now, I seriously don't know what to do. No, you're not the jerk and you didn't do anything wrong. If anything, I think you seriously dodged a train. Like, this lady sounds insane. For starters, she straight up just ghosted you, and then when she sees that you have a new girlfriend, she's like, you know what? I changed my mind. I now want to be your girlfriend. Let's get together. And it's like, no, that doesn't work that way. You literally missed the boat. I'm sorry, but this is not okay. And the fact that she came to your house and was like, oh my god, I can't believe you blocked me. When it's like she absolutely knows that you already have a girlfriend. Like that is so toxic, it's not even funny. So no, you're definitely not the jerk because the way this lady acted, in my opinion, is truly insane. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for telling my sister that I'm not swapping rooms with her? Simply 
simply because she will be moving out soon and I simply don't want to go through the effort. Here's what happened. I'm an 18 year old male and I was in the car with my mom today and she asked me if my sister had said anything to me about switching rooms. Well, I said no one did and then I asked what she meant. She said that apparently my sister wanted to switch rooms with me soon because my room has a smaller room beside it and she wanted to use that room for her daughter and then my room for her. My sister for reference is 26 years old and still lives at home with me and her parents and she also has a two year old daughter. Now what makes this even more frustrating is that whenever she was pregnant we did actually swap rooms because my room was downstairs so it was more convenient for her and I agreed to swap with her just to help her out. So she got what she wanted and now she's asking me to swap her again and this is all because she's never satisfied with what she has. But here's the thing I am 100% not swapping with her because she is 26 years old and she was meant to be saving for the past year to move out. So there's like zero point in us swapping rooms because she's just going to move out soon anyways. And I'm also planning on getting my room painted as well. When my mom told me about this, I hadn't heard anything about it. But whenever we got home, my sister asked me how I would feel about switching rooms. So obviously in that moment, I said no, stating straight up that I would not be switching rooms with her. And when I said that, she actually seemed surprised for some reason, which I simply can't understand because I'm not sure why she thought I would be on board with it. She then asked me why, so I told her that I thought she was moving out soon. And she acted all offended and was like, oh, so you want to get rid of us? And basically acted as if I heavily insulted her or something like that. She was also yapping about how she wants her daughter to have a room beside her, as if they would make me feel bad enough to agree with her. But I was just straight up with her, and I told her it wasn't happening, and she had the audacity to call me selfish, and was just super pissed off at me for some reason. So am I the jerk for not wanting to swap my rooms with my sister again because right now I really don't know what to do. No, I don't think you're the jerk at all. If your sister was like a teenager or something like that where she's coming at you and being like, I want to switch rooms again, then I would kind of understand where this entitled weird attitude's coming from. But it's the fact that she's 26 years old that's kind of like throwing me for a loop. And trust me, I get it. Sometimes you got to live at home and things just don't work out. So I'm not shaming the sister for living at home or anything like that. Like that's not what's happening. But it does seem odd that she's supposedly planning on moving, but also trying to like set up a good room for her and her daughter. Like, I don't know about you, but that just doesn't sound like someone who's getting ready to move out. Because if anything, this sounds like someone who's getting ready to settle down and stay put. So in my opinion, I don't think you're the jerk because you've definitely already done this once before and switching rooms again with her, in my opinion, is just going to be a pain in the neck. My parents are obsessed with only eating authentic food, even going as far as refusing to eat at a restaurant if they find out the food isn't authentic from the culture it comes from. And after watching this happen my entire life, I'm now at a point where I seriously just don't like going out to eat with them because their attitude is so obnoxious. Here's what happened. Okay, so this situation has been a thing ever since I can remember. We grew up in the Southwest and my parents loved Mexican food. But anytime we were out getting Mexican food, they would eat it while complaining the whole time that it wasn't authentic. And in typical fashion, it was all chain restaurants. So my Mexican food experiences was stuff like Chili's or Baja Fresh or On the Border. And this was a twice a month occurrence growing up. They would say stuff like, I'm craving Mexican food. How about some Baja Fresh? Oh, that sounds great. And then they would proceed to complain for the entire meal about how it's not authentic. In fact, they hated it so much that they would steal 10 to 12 containers of salsa from the salsa bar just to take it home every time as well. And keep in mind, these were white yuppies from Southern California. They were not Hispanic people at all. And my grandparents were super waspy. People like politicians or college professors. The thing is, is that they never took us for authentic Mexican Mexican because they thought that it was beneath them. You have to go to Spanish-speaking neighborhoods, Spanish-speaking restaurants, or Spanish-speaking food trucks just to get the authentic stuff. The response when I asked what authentic Mexican was, and can we go get some this time, they would say, well, hopefully you get to have some someday, but we don't go to the places that offer it here. Now, I'm convinced they didn't even know what authentic Mexican was and just associated it with being cooked by an authentic Mexican person in a more rustic-looking kitchen or environment. My dad used to get these giant burritos from a food truck on his lunch break and then brag about how authentic they were when he got home. He would even brag that the cook didn't even speak English. And for some reason, this is a core childhood memory of mine. In fact, I got one with him once as a kid and an adult, and now I realize they were just simple flour tortilla burritos, and they were just served by a Spanish-speaking person out in a food truck. This whole dynamic carried over for decades to us kids being adults. Now, also, sushi is a big thing where I live, so we took them out for sushi. Mom never had it before and dad really didn't either. Now mom of course complained the entire time and dad jumped into complaining as
as well. The most notable one was when we went for my brother's graduation because sushi is his favorite and he wanted to share it with everybody. But my parents then start asking the wait staff if they have avocados in Japan because they want the authentic sushi. And the answer, by the way, is of course not. So then they start making a fuss about why it's being served that way. I then tell them that there's no salmon in Japan either. But once I say that, they start to complain about the salmon they had been enjoying up until this point. They were enjoying the sushi because it was really good sushi. But the more I told them, the more they just didn't want it. And to be completely honest, I was instigating the situation because my brother and I enjoy watching them squirm over stuff like this at this point in our lives. This then devolves into both of them refusing to eat any of the sushi, all because it wasn't authentic. So I order them chicken teriyaki bowls and I tell them it's the most authentic thing on the menu. But honestly, I cannot imagine existing in the self-inflicted prison that is their brains. It must be a sad way to experience this world because they can't even enjoy a delicious meal without the both of them being massive jerks. Wow, this is such a weird way to like approach literally anything in your life. You mean to tell me that these people are obsessed with having authentic food of like the culture it's coming from and yet they still go to Chili's and On the Border and all these other chain restaurants and it seems like they only go there to be like, wow, this is an authentic Mexican food while also refusing to go get said Mexican food that's actually authentic from like a food truck or in an area that doesn't speak English. And it's like, people, what do you want? Do you just want to complain or do you want to venture into the culture of people who actually made it and get it straight from the source? Like, it's such a stupid way of approaching food in general. Well, this isn't authentic, so I'm not going to eat it. It's like, what are you talking about? Just eat your sushi. It's not that serious. So yeah, your parents are super weird because the way they're approaching food is so annoying and incredibly tedious. My older parents almost fell for a $7,000 scam as some jerk called my father claiming that he was a police officer and that my father had a warrant for his arrest. And even to this day, I'm still so frustrated that my parents almost fell for this. Here's what happened. Okay, so I got a text from my mom saying that dad is talking to a police officer on the phone and this officer is claiming that he has a warrant for his arrest. Now this immediately was a red flag for me as I've heard these scams online before. So I proceed to ask my mom to get the police officer's name and badge number and what city he's calling from. Once I have this information, I go ahead and contact the city that he's claiming to be from and provide my dad's information and ask if he's got any kind of active warrant. Well, the person at the other end of the line is claiming that they see nothing under his name or birth date for warrants. I then asked about the officer that my dad was supposedly talking to and then I gave them their badge number and the receptionist says that nobody by that name works for the city. She then says to me, let me guess, they're saying that you missed your court date and you owe them money and she said that because it's a very common scam that's been going around. So with this information, I start calling my parents and they don't answer, but I just keep calling them and eventually my dad answers and he says, hey, I'm busy right now. I'll talk to you in a little bit. And then he hangs up on me and doesn't give me a chance to explain that he's talking to a scammer. I immediately text my mom that dad is being scammed. I call the city. There's no warrant and that officer doesn't exist. And my God, it was crazy frustrating in that moment that he's more than willing to speak to a scammer on the phone, creating a false sense of urgency rather than his son who's done the research and verified that all of this is not real. Needless to say, I'm terrified for the future if people like my father, who's in his mid-60s, are falling for scams like this. The only reason that my parents actually believed it is that the scammer faked his caller ID to match what Google says the police department number is for our local branch. And doing something like that is obviously the oldest trick in the book, and it's such a shame that my parents nearly fell for it because they were almost out $7,000 as a result. Yeah, that's crazy. You definitely have to be careful with who's calling you. If someone's calling asking for your information or saying stuff like, oh, you're being sued or, oh my God, you have an arrest warrant or anything else like that. Like seriously, first off, they're not going to call you. And secondly, you definitely have to cross reference before you give any of your information. So while I'm really glad that the original poster's parents didn't fall for the scam in the end, the fact that they were even taking that seriously in the slightest, in my opinion, is incredibly alarming. This next story came from the Am I the Jerk subreddit. Check the links in the description if you would like to submit your own story. Am I the Jerk for finally putting my foot down? after my mom's refused to allow me to go to a doctor after having a cough for over a month. Here's what happened. I'm an 18-year-old female, and I started to get what I thought was the cold or the flu around the end of September. I was coughing, sneezing, and my eyes were watering. I mean, truly, the whole works. I didn't think much of it since I normally feel a bit awful when the seasons change, and this was right around the time everyone was getting sick. Well, a week into October, my symptoms were getting worse. I started coughing so much to the point that it would trigger my gag reflex. Then I started to have trouble keeping food down. Since I work in customer service, I had one nightmare of a time talking to people. Every three words, I would start
start coughing uncontrollably and no amount of tea could help. Three weeks in and I start to develop a light fever. It's nothing too crazy, but I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Tossing and turning in bed would disrupt the phlegm and mucus in my throat and I would end up coughing so much I had to spend most of the night hunched over the toilet until all the mucus came up and I felt good enough to go back to bed. Now at this point it's been about four weeks and gagging in the bathroom over the toilet is a daily occurrence. I still can't sleep properly. I'm running out of breath and coughing when I'm just walking to my bus stop or even when I'm going up a few flights of stairs and I haven't been able to eat anything of substantial food in two days. But even still, my mom refuses to take me to see a doctor and is convinced that I just have a cold. We don't have a family doctor. She won't give me my updated health card and she will not let anyone take me to a doctor or walk-in clinic. She has ignored me before when it comes to health problems that I've had, such as my esophagus being ripped open from the pure force of me throwing up for two weeks. And of course, she completely forgot the fact that the doctor said if we had waited even an hour, which is something she originally wanted to do, they would have had to shove a tube down my throat and I would have had an infection. She has also completely ignored and denied a nurse who was saying that I needed a knee brace when I smacked my knee so hard on a rock during a hike that it shattered the cartilage in my kneecap. She ended up slapping a compression bandage on it and complained when I was still hobbling around two weeks later and said that I was overreacting. In fact, one time I had a bit of pillow fluff stuck in my ear and it took her three years to take me to get it checked out and to get it finally cleaned out. She waited so long that both my ears developed a really bad skin infection and I had to take a bunch of medication and eardrops just to fix it. Well, tonight I finally put my foot down and I told her directly that if she didn't take me to see a doctor within this week, I'm going to find a way to take myself there. She then started crying, saying stuff like, how could you possibly go against my better judgments? And then asked me how I could possibly believe all of my co-workers, teachers, and peers who were telling me to go see a doctor all over my own mother. I tried to talk over her, saying how I've been sick for almost a month and that even if it is just a cold, it wouldn't hurt to get it checked anyways. I then started coughing a lot and she kept telling me to be quiet and the reason why I'm still sick is because I won't shut my mouth. So am I the jerk for finally standing up for myself? Because right now I'm still incredibly frustrated. No, your mom is an awful parent. Who in their right mind would be like, oh, you're just faking it and then continue to let their kid, I don't know, have an awful cough or walk around with a limp or be like, oh yeah, I literally can't hear out of this ear because there's something in it. Like seriously, it doesn't sound like the original poster is like looking for attention. They just want to be healthy and their mom is literally denying them that. So no, you didn't do anything wrong and if I was in your shoes, I would go straight to a doctor's office or some kind of urgent care because what you're experiencing definitely needs to be looked at by a doctor. I don't know about you, but if I had a cough for like over a month, I'd be like, okay, there's got to be something wrong here. So hopefully this all works out for you and hopefully you're able to get like a copy of your insurance card because what your mom's doing right now is really not good and you deserve way better than that. Am I the jerk for wasting everybody's time in therapy all because I was accused of lying by my scumbag mother? Because right now I'm still very frustrated and at this point I don't know what to do. Here's what happened. I'm a 16 year old female and my mom, her husband and I are in a group therapy with each other. We started therapy a few weeks after Father's Day because that was the final straw for them to insist we all needed therapy to work on why I won't let us be the family that they want. We started at the end of July and by the end of August, my mom accused me of lying, called me a liar and laid out this really big sob story about how much it hurt to have me lie to her and do everything in my power to destroy her marriage. And this really pissed me off and I didn't lie at any point of this. I said as much in the follow-up session and the therapist asked me to outline my side and how I felt having mom call me a liar. My mom kept trying to interrupt me and she told the therapist to shut up and she accused me of being a vicious liar. Now to give some explanation about the situation, my mom and her husband got married three years ago. They moved in together two months before and before moving in, they sat me down and asked me if I was okay with us moving in together and making a family of three again. My mom brought up how we would have a man around the house again since we didn't have one because my dad passed away and how good it would be for her to have a husband and for me to have a dad. And he said he couldn't wait to be my dad and he always wanted to be a father. In fact, he said he already had plans for us on Father's Day. Now this was February of three years ago and I told him I wasn't okay with that stuff. I said that I didn't want another dad and I wouldn't let him be my dad. And on top of that, I was not about to spend Father's Day celebrating someone who is not my dad. Well, they started laughing and proceeded as normal, but Father's Day became a struggle because I have not spent the day with him the last three years. And trust me, he has tried and so has my mom. But I meant what I said. I never called him dad or let him fill the role in my life. Well, this year he snapped and he had a temper tantrum and said I was supposed to 
supposed to be with him on Father's Day and not spending the day alone and that he did not sign up to be nothing to me. My mom then called me a liar because she said I promised to develop a close relationship with her husband and that I said yes to wanting what they asked. She said that I had said that I would give him Father's Day and that I lied and I've not followed through on any of it. She said that I made him think I would be a willing participant and that I wanted us to be a family, but it pisses me off because I never said what she claims and I even repeated what I had said back to them. The therapist couldn't get my mom to apologize and she has no control over the sessions where my mom and her husband dominate it. So I'm just totally silent and I zone out. And this is something that they only realized two weeks ago. Eventually, they called me on it and I spoke up again after more than a month of not talking in therapy, just to confirm that I was not listening. It then came up last week and I said I was done engaging because I was owed an apology for being called a liar. My mom and her husband are now pissed off that I'm wasting everybody's time letting therapy happen. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? No, you are not the jerk. Your mom and her husband absolutely went about this the wrong way. Instead of going to therapy for legitimate reasons, they went to therapy in some kind of like desperate attempt to convince you, if not make you, call this guy your dad and spend Father's Day with him in some kind of way. And that is honestly so toxic and so weird. Like your mom is straight up lying about you and trying to be like, oh yeah, you're actually the problem here. You said you would give him this day and you would develop a close relationship. But it's like, what are you talking about? None of that happened. You laid it out very clearly and these people just laughed you off. And that, in my opinion, shows everything that you need to know. So no, you're definitely not the jerk because if I was in your shoes, I would be spacing out during these therapy sessions too. Because if this therapist is going to let these people call you a liar and then not even be allowed to like share your point of view, then honestly, this is all just a complete waste of time. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.